Good morning, church. Why don't y'all just go ahead and join and sing with us this morning? Let's sing together. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate, even if I run away. Cause your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercy for me every day Cause your love never fails But you stay the same through the ages But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me And your love never fails is strong and the water's deep, but I'm not alone here in these open seas, cause your love never fails. The chasm was far too wide, I never thought I'd reach the other side, but your love never fails. Thank you, Jesus. You stay the same through the ages well, Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me When your love never together that he makes all things work together for our good oh you make all things work together for my good oh you make all things work together for my good oh you make all things work together for my Because I know that you love me Oh, and your love never fails yeah. Your love never together this morning church let's sing who is moving on the waters who is moving on the waters 
And who is holding up the moon? And who is peeling back the darkness with a burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mountains? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul? Creator God, He is our way. Great I am, He is Yahweh, Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh, the righteous Son, He is Yahweh, the three in one, He is Yahweh. Let's continue singing together to Yahweh. Who is he that makes me happy? Who is he that gives me peace and comfort? And who is he that brings me comfort? And turns the bitter into sweet. Who is stirring up my passion? Yes, you are. But who is rising up in me? Who is feeling up my hunger? With everything I need, Lord, creator God, He is Yahweh, the great I. Son, He is Yahweh, the three in one, He is Yahweh. Creator God, He is Yahweh, the great I am, He is Yahweh, the Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh, the righteous Son, He is Yahweh, the three Thank you that you are all we say you are and all that you say you are. Lord, I'm so thankful for what you have done for us, Lord. Lord, just taking a step back and just thinking on what we sing about you. Lord, you are the conqueror, you are great, and you are mighty, Lord, but 
what even amazes me more is that you sent your only son, that you left perfect community with yourself for us. And after he died on that cross, that's not where it ended. So Lord, this morning, I wanna pray and I wanna thank you that our God is not dead. I wanna thank you for being our living hope, Lord. We love you and we thank you and it's in your name we always pray.
Jesus Christ, my living oh, Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ. Good morning, Connect Arab. Glad that you're able to be here with us. If you would open up your Bible to Daniel chapter 6. We're going to be uh, picking up there on our short series here called Stand. A couple of things we want to talk about before we dive into everything. Obviously, uh, we are still going to have to be meeting uh, the way that we have been meeting digitally for the next few weeks. I want to encourage you in the midst of that. I know that all of us kind of thought that this would be over sooner than it, than it has been, but um, we still have an opportunity to meet and to have community in a really unique way. So I want to challenge you over the next few weeks, uh, even though it may be frustrating, uh, stick with us so that when we do get to come back together in one place as a church, everyone's going to be on the same page. Um, I want to encourage everyone also to plug into our weekly events. We have uh, different things that are going on uh, at different times for all different ages. So on Monday nights, we have uh, a Facebook Live that happens for parents and for children. And then on uh, Wednesdays, there's the youth. Tuesdays, there's an, adult, um, there's an adult live, and also on Friday nights as well. So we want everybody to kind of be able to plug in. We've got some exciting uh, new things that we're going to be debuting here in the next couple weeks as well, ways that you can engage uh, with us, some Bible study options and things like that. So we're looking forward to doing all of that. If you don't have a Bible, if you want to use your smart device and go to the, to the Bible app, and go to live events. If you're in the Arab area, you should see Connect Arab come up on your device and you can follow along with us. The notes should be in there. So last week, we, we started this series talking about what it means as a Christ follower to stand out, right? To be different and yet find a way to communicate God's message in a way that people can relate to. And, and so as we started, we talked about Daniel and how he was taken from his home and, and brought 
to Babylon, and we talked about the evil King Nebuchadnezzar who destroyed Jerusalem, brought uh, these, uh, these young Jewish people to his uh, culture and, and indoctrinated them, wanted them to become leaders of Babylon so that he could steal the power that came from Israel. But what he wasn't counting on was Daniel, uh, someone who was willing to stand up and stand out for the things that were of God. And so we heard last week about how, how part of how they tried to indoctrinate, they tried to take away their names and they tried to change their diet, right? And, and Daniel stood and said, no, you know, I'm not going to allow myself to be defiled because we understand that in Jewish uh, history and in their law, they're given certain requirements for what they can and can't eat as, as a reminder about cleanliness. And so um, Daniel says, I'm not going to eat the food that you want me to eat. I don't want to desecrate myself like that. And and, and he doesn't make a spectacle of it, but he goes and he talks to those that are in charge. And he says, look, allow us, me and my friends, not to eat this food, but to eat the vegetables that we've been asking to eat. And then compare us after 10 days with those that are around us and see who is healthier and fitter. And, and as it turns out, uh, that was the right way to go because obedience to God is always the right road to take. And, and we talked a bit about how sometimes we can stand out in the right way uh, for the right things, and sometimes we can stand out in the wrong way, even if it is for the right things, right? That sometimes the making the point, being in the middle, in the midst of truth is, is important, but how we speak it can carry so much more weight. God never says that we have to be offensive in the way that we do things, that we need to bring people to a knowledge of who he is as best we can, uh, by the things that we say and also the way that we live. So if you, if you have grown up in church at all or if you are uh, familiar with Bible stories, this one's gonna probably be one that you're familiar with. This week, we kind of move through the story of Daniel and we skip because Daniel was a young man when Nebuchadnezzar brought him to uh, Babylon. But now we pick up in Daniel chapter six and Daniel is not young anymore. It's funny because as we think of the story of Daniel and, and we think about how we learned it, maybe when we were kids or uh, how we've been exposed to this story, oftentimes we think of it as if we were kids or we think about it as a story about kids, right? There's these cute, cuddly lions that are snuggling in the cave with this young, good-looking Daniel, right? That's, that's not really what history has to tell us here. The fact of the matter is, Daniel is about 80 years old when this happens. So he's not a young man anymore. I and mean, he's not all that old. I understand that. 80 is not all that old. But he's not as young as we just, we have this picture in our mind. And we have these pictures of the lions that, you know, they were these soft, kind of cuddly looking, let's get in the, 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 the pit and snuggle with them. That's not the case. If anyone's ever been to the zoo and seen these large cats, they are intimidating animals. They're big and they're scary. Listen, listen raise your hand where you are. Have you seen The Tiger King on Netflix? If you haven't, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if I should tell you to watch it or not. It's super, super weird. But the, they're scary. The, the big cats that they show you, obviously those are tigers, but lions, they're, they're big, scary cats. Also, Carol totally killed her husband and fed him to the tigers. But that's, that doesn't have to do with what we're talking about here. That has to do with, with the tiger king. So put that aside and that can go on your watch list for, um, don't tell that, I didn't, I didn't tell you to watch Tiger King. But let, look, this is what we have to start realizing is that these are dangerous animals. They're big animals and they were used for this purpose because they were violent and effective, right? They, they, would, they would starve them and then they would throw people into the lion's den. And what would the lions do? They're wild animals. They would eat them, right? So it was a horrible way to die. It was a horrible punishment. Nobody wanted this uh, type of scenario. And so understanding that that's the background and understanding that we have to re reframe the way that we view Daniel and the lion's den, the way that we think about how this story looks. We want to bring a little context 
to this, okay, as we talk about it, because I think it's important. We said last week, context is key. We want to know where we've been and where we're going to understand where we are. So in Daniel chapter 6, he is serving under another king, not Nebuchadnezzar, okay? This is many years have passed, and Daniel has faithfully served, and we find that he is under King Darius at this point, which is the third king that Daniel has served under. And we know from history that Daniel, or I'm sorry, excuse me, that Darius is an administrative genius. The guy knows what he's doing, and he goes about setting up his kingdom in a way that's very efficient, okay? That is not me. He was a type A personality. If you're a type A personality, raise your hand at home, right? That is not me. I am not that person that, that does great when it comes to lining everything out in a way that makes sense. I'm a big idea kind of guy, right? I get that creative, the creative stuff. Hey, this would be a really good idea. Or this would be a really good idea. And then there are people that God has placed in my life that can come alongside me and say, hey, uh, how can we do that in a way that makes sense? So that's, that's encouraging that there are people that can do it. Um, Darius was one of, those, one of those guys. And he sets up 120 satraps. S-A-T-R-A-P-S. They're basically like kingdom protectors. And, and their job, is, and, then, and then three administrators over the 120 satraps. And they're, they're kind of the, the, the point of these people is to prevent rebellion, to deal with taxes, national financial matters, those different kinds of things, right? Big picture stuff, but the working of it out was left to three administrators, and then 120 satraps. And Daniel was one of those three administrators overseeing the rest of these people. And I want to read to you here, uh, starting in Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Some of this is going to tell you what I just described, but um, in, in verse 6, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 1 says this, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three officials of whom David was one to whom these satraps would give account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So what happened here, right? Daniel shows out, not in a bad way, but he is faithful as he continues to be faithful in his life at at somewhere around 80 years old. And he distinguishes himself from the others that are around him, right? Daniel's life, we see all throughout it that he is seen as someone who's standing out, serving with an excellent spirit, going the extra mile. He wasn't a guy to take shortcuts. He wanted to make sure that everything was done well. And, and, and here's the thing. We see, we see that, the, that the, key, the king notices this. And wants to promote him to like the second in command. It would be the only person he'd have to answer to would be the king himself. And so whenever you see this type of scenario, you're going to have other people that are going to start to get jealous, right? They say jealousy is an ugly emotion, doesn't look good on anybody. And yet we find ourselves falling into that quite often. Here's where the other officials that were surrounding uh, Daniel... They, they were starting to get jealous, right? And they go all hunger games on him, right? They're like, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna pull, out, pull any punches. I wanna go after this guy because I want the position that the king is trying to give to him. So what appears to be a promotion from the outside introduces a lot of trouble on the inside for Daniel. And so in the midst of all of this, we see Daniel do something very, very interesting, he stands strong for God in the, in the face of all of this animosity that's headed for him. We see Daniel stand strong with supernatural strength that can come only from a long-term developed faith relationship with the living God. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that David didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to be faithful to God today. He is 80 years old, somewhere around 80 years old at this point, and he has walked and lived his life in such a way that he has brought glory and honor to God, and that these things that we see Daniel doing are things that he is constantly doing. They're disciplines 
that he has made a part of his everyday life. So this isn't something new for Daniel to stand strong, but he's about to be given an opportunity to do that in a very unique way. And as we look through this, I think that there are three things that we can learn. Number one in your notes is this. There's three truths about standing strong. It was true for Daniel. It's true for us. Number one is this. When God raises you up, we have to expect that there will be people to tear us down. Now, that might sound super negative, right? You're like, man, what are you doing? That's super negative. And I'm not, I'm not trying to play the victim here. But the fact of the matter is, it might not be fun, but it's true. That as we are lifted up, there will be those that are unhappy with us being lifted up right? There are those that are either out of jealousy or out of pride. Sometimes it's well-intentioned individuals and they just make mistakes and they get turned around in their head and your, your being lifted up is frustrating to them because why? Because we all want to be the one that's being lifted up. And so we have to recognize the truth of the fact that as we're obedient to God and we see God raising us up, that we need to expect that there's going to be trouble and problems. Doesn't mean we need to make trouble and problems. We need to be ready to respond in a biblical way to the troubles and the problems that come up. In Australia and in New Zealand and the UK, they call this the tall poppy syndrome, okay? Because they have these poppy plants that grow really tall there, and when they get to a certain height, someone comes along and chops it off at the bottom, right? When... Uh, when we in the USA call it the crab mentality. This is really interesting because if you put a bunch of crabs into a bucket together, something that they do is that they will all fight to try to get out. And that actually causes none of them to be able to get out because the one who's at the top who reaches trying to get out, the other crabs are grabbing him and pulling him back down, right? So there's this constant feeling. And now obviously they're not thinking in their brains, hey, I don't want this crab to get out. But they're thinking about themselves. There's this, there's this self-promotion, right? And that's, that's what's happened here. We need to understand that the larger our influence grows, the larger the target we become. Now, I want to pause here for a second because, church, I want to be real careful. I don't want us to get to a place where we start to be saying, oh, well, everyone's after me and woe is me and all those different types of things. Because, listen, we get a lot of that in the Western church also, okay? The fact of the matter is when God will put you in these circumstances, he's going to equip you with the ability to be able to handle it. He's going to equip you with a, a community of faith. He's going to equip you with a knowledge of his word. If he's the one that's lifting you up, when these trials and tribulations come along, he's going to equip us to be able to work our way through it. Now, in, in Daniel chapter 6, verses four, verse 4 through 5, we see how Daniel responds uh, or I'm sorry, we see how, the, how the, the leaders respond to Daniel. It says this, then these high officials and the satraps came by an agreement uh, to the king and they said to him, oops, I started in the wrong verse, four, how about four? Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, to the kingdom. but they could not find any ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Really interesting there. They look at, the, at, at, at Daniel and at his life and they say, man, we got to find a way to torpedo this guy's career, right? Does it remind anyone else of any other politics going on these days? That's all I'm going to say, right? Everybody's attacking everybody and, and we got to torpedo. And yet they look at his life and they can't find any fault. Man, that's a good place to be. And they say, look, if we're going to find anything that we're going to be going to use against him, it's going to have to be something out of his faithfulness to God. Really interesting that that happens there. See, in, in Western Christianity, we believe that when we're serving God, nothing should go wrong, right? Like God's a genie in a bottle, and if we, we rub it and we do the things that we're supposed to do, that he's just going to poof, appear, what do you need, Right? And when we've seen Aladdin, you know, what do you need? And, and that's, that's not 
biblically the idea that we're given about what it looks like to be a Christ follower. Matter of fact, Jesus tells us the opposite is true, that, that as we serve and honor God, that we are going to come across trials and tribulations. And the, the thing that's been gifted to us as believers, as God followers, is that we have the ability to walk in righteousness and, and to walk with our God and Savior in the middle of that darkness. And so it's not that we won't experience the darkness, it's that God has given us a way to walk through the darkness with hope. See, we shouldn't face opposition, or we shouldn't think that we're not going to face opposition because we're doing the right thing. As a matter of fact, we, we know that if we're not facing opposition, that's when we should start to get a little worried, right? When, when we're walking on this road and there doesn't seem to be anything difficult or anything frustrating or anything hard popping up in our way, we might have to start to ask ourselves, man, am I going the right direction? Because clearly scripture tells us that this road that we've been called to walk is not an easy road, but God's going to walk it along with us. Here's the deal. We know that we're fighting a spiritual battle, and whenever we're moving the kingdom forward, we should always expect resistance from our enemy. Okay, there's a great show, a bunch of great shows on Netflix. I like watching uh, shows about like old kingdoms and kings and things like that. And um, I, really, I really enjoy that. And, and, and one of the things that you get to, to watch through these shows is how the, the armies and the, the military ideas start coming from all these different sides. And everyone is trying to push forward against their enemy. And anytime anyone has a success or moves forward, their enemies are right there to try to stand in their way to block them. Why? Because they don't want them to gain ground. They don't want them to continue moving forward. But that's exactly what God has called us to do. These other two administrators, they hatch a plan and they want to uh, butter up the king and make it so that Daniel will be um, considered a criminal for being obedient to God in his prayer life, right? So I don't know how they butter up the king. It doesn't give us that information. Maybe they come in and say, it's a great robe. You look, you've been working out, king. You've got big muscles. I don't know how they do it, but they somehow they make the king feel good about himself. What? And he falls victim to the same thing that we all do at certain times. He gets prideful. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, right? And so the, then these, these uh, other administrators, they say, hey, you know, I think that you're good enough to be a god. And so I think that nobody else should be able to pray to anybody unless it's you. You should be the only one to reserve, to receive people's prayers and adoration. And Darius is like, sign me up. That's a great idea, right? He's not thinking about Daniel. He's not thinking about any of that right now. He's thinking about the fact that that sounds good. I want to be that guy. Yes. So they go ahead and they make a law that any, anyone who prays to any god but to him within that next 30 days, is thrown into the lion's den. And the king agrees to it. Sounds ridiculous to us, right? Thankful we live in a good, good country where they're not gonna do that, right? Hopefully. So this is one of those moments where we see Daniel is given a choice. Remember, Daniel doesn't know what's gonna happen. See, you and I know the story, right? We know what happens. We've heard this story maybe growing up or in church in different places on the felt board when we were kids in the, in the Sunday school rooms, right? We know what happens, that, that Daniel is rescued. But Daniel doesn't know that here. He just knows that he has a choice put in front of him. And the way that I see it, he has three options. He can either stop praying right? He could say, man, God, I've been faithful to you for the last 80 years. My life is in danger. So for the next 30 days, just going to take a break, right? Just going to take a break. You, you, I'll be back. Don't worry, right? Or he could pray silently. I won't be honest with you, church. This is probably the option that I would have gone for, okay? You know, one of those where like, I'd be like sitting there getting ready and just what are you doing, Matt? Oh, uh, nothing. I was just standing here. You weren't praying. No, I wasn't praying. Of course I wasn't praying. I was just, just taking a minute, right? That's probably where I would have gone with this. So I give him a lot of credit because that's not where my brain first goes is to say, yeah, I choose the lions, right? Or he can do the third thing, which is to keep praying and risk death. 
So how did he have such audacious faith? How did he stand strong in the face of what he knew was going to come? Because he knew that if he kept praying and doing what he'd been doing, he was going to end up in the lion's den. He just didn't know what was going to happen after that. Number two, number two in your notes says this, kneeling to pray is what gives us strength to stand. Kneeling to pray is what gives us strength to stand. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 says this, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, the law that said that he can't, have, uh, he can't pray to anyone but to Darius for the next 30 days, he went into his house where he had, where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to God before, or gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. So what does he do? Daniel's first response is to pray. His first response is to say, that's not right. I'm going to pray about it. Listen, first response to problems should never be to panic, but should always be to pray, right? I look at myself, if, if a law like that came down, my first response would be, ah, I need more ammo, right? I don't even know what I would just, my first response would be that first, that panic, Instead of saying, God, this is not right. Let me, let me come before you. And if you look at the language that we use when we talk about prayer, it shows oftentimes how little we value prayer, right? We say, we say things like, all we can do now is pray. All that's left is for us to pray. <laughs> this, that's not all that's left. You know, what you're saying when you do that is you're saying, I've tried to manipulate this situation. I've tried to do it on my own. And now the only thing that I have left to do is to pray. I think we're looking at it the wrong way. We have the ability as God's people to have a direct line of communication with the creator, the author of the universe. And still... When trouble comes and when frustrations, the first thing we do is panic. And we try to figure out how we can get our fingers into it and how we can fix it. But God's given us the ability to pray and we know that prayer in the book of James, it tells us faithful, the, the prayers of a faithful full person availeth much in the King James Version, right? They do a lot of good. They, they, they uh, press against the heart of God and we know that, that those prayers make a difference, and yet we find ourselves doing that same thing. Oh, the I don't, I don't have any other option, so I'm going to pray. No, pray. Don't so when all when all else fails, pray. I've heard people say that a lot. How about pray so all else won't fail? Right? Give God the opportunity to show Himself strong and mighty, and to work through that situation. So Daniel doesn't announce what he's going to do. He doesn't stand up and say, I'm going to go pray because this is such a wrong situation. He doesn't fling open his windows and stand there and call everybody over and say, this is, I'm going against what they've said, the orders from the king because it's so unjust. Hashtag I'm so holy, right? That's not what he does. He goes and he does what he had done before. You see this idea of discipline comes up in his life again. He's not doing anything different than what he did, was doing before. He just continued responding to God the way that he had been in prayer, saying, God, bless this. It wasn't a public display, but it was a personal discipline. He just did what he'd done before. So much of Daniel's success, we talked about this last week, so much, of, so much of Daniel's blessings, I believe, come because of his pre-deciding, his decision beforehand that he will or will not do a certain thing. And here we see it again. Last time he said, I'm not going to defile myself with that food. This time he says, I'm not going to stop praying and doing what I've always done just because someone else says that I should. And then we see, of course, now remember, Daniel doesn't know how this is going to turn out. Daniel just knows that God's called him to be faithful. So if you have not pre-decided to know God deeper and to move into closer relationship with God, I want to be honest with you, church, I'm not being mean. It's not, probably not going to happen. 
okay? Because these things don't just happen. We have to decide that it's a course of action we're going to take before those moments come to us. And, it, and the interesting thing is I love the fact that it says that he kneeled. There's something about that idea of posture. Not that we always have to kneel every time we pray, right? There's not a right or a wrong way to do that. But I, I think if nothing else, it can tell us about a heart posture. It says there's humility involved in this. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kneel before you humbly and ask you to work in your way in this situation. It takes us completely out of that circumstance. He stood strong before men because we see Daniel kneeling before God. So when life gives us more than we can handle, the first thing that we should do is bring that humility into our hearts and say, God, help me. Please be with me in the middle of this situation because I can't do it on my own. I don't know what that's gonna look like for you. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, big, a big diagnosis from the doctor, right? It's, you got the cancer, you got the big C word. Maybe that's what's standing in front of you. Maybe it's money troubles. Parents, right? On a little bit of a lighter subject, we should be prayer warriors because I know what it's like to try to get my kids to clean their room, right? Or to, or to be their homeschool teacher for the past however long it's been. It feels like a lot, a long time, right? So we understand that prayer in the midst of that. Maybe there's things that we have to stand for, like maybe we're talking about our kids. Our kids will have to play in a different soccer league than the one that meets on Sundays or on Wednesdays or whatever that meets during a church, a church time. Maybe we're not gonna do business in this way or, or do a specific business deal because it lacks integrity, right? Whatever the reason that God's, or whatever the thing that God's put in front of you, there's an opportunity. Maybe I'm gonna break up with this person that I'm dating because the, they're, they're pressuring me to move uh, in physical relationship past a point where I'm comfortable, and so then uh, the what ifs start in our brain, right? Oh, well, if, what if my child doesn't get to play college ball because I didn't put them in? Your kid's probably not gonna play college ball. But that's, that's a separate thing, right? Well, the what ifs in our brain come in and they start, it starts doing this, or what if I don't get that promotion because I wasn't willing to do this deal? Or what if I don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend because I've broken up with this person and now I feel so alone? I would love to tell you that it's all gonna work out the way that you want it to in the end. But I can't do that. That's not the way it works. This isn't a Disney movie, right? It doesn't all work out with everybody being happy in the end. That doesn't mean that we're not still called to stand when God has called us to stand. Daniel would have asked, what if the lions eat me, right? What, talk about what ifs. God, what, what if I do this? If I stand up for the things that are right in you, and what if I am eaten by a large cat, right? What if that happens? That's a fair question because there are plenty of people throughout Scripture that, uh, that have stepped up with enormous faith and for whatever reason, God didn't rescue them. And so we go on, we look at this and go, well, you know, what's that? What good does that do me? Because right is always right. And truth is always God's truth. And we might not know the reasons, but we know the creator and that he loves us. And that whatever the outcome in the end will ultimately bring glory and honor to God. There's no guarantee that nothing bad is ever going to happen to us. But we do have a guarantee of someone who'll walk with us through that. All we can promise is this, number three, and then we're done. When you do what's right, you can always trust God with the results. When we do what's right, we can always trust God with the results. We know how this story ends. Not all stories end that way. You might look at me and say, Pastor, yeah, but you know what? My kid died. My, my wife died. I lost my job because I didn't do this. Or my kids and my relationship were, was broken because I wouldn't let them do this and play on this night, whatever that looks like. Maybe the end doesn't look like it does here. All Daniel knew was that for 80 years, God had been faithful to him. And so 
Daniel pre-decided that he was going to be faithful to God. And he says, if he saves me, I'll trust him. If he doesn't, I'll trust him. Without knowing all the answers. King Darius, we see here that he's devastated because he knows he's been tricked. And, and so he drops Daniel into the pit. And we don't know what happens in there, right? We can speculate all day long. Maybe Daniel prayed, right? We'd like to see that as a church, as Christians. We're like, yes, he was probably praying. Maybe there was praising and worship going on. Maybe he held his breath, right? Maybe he peed himself. Totally would have been me. I totally would have done it. No tiger's gonna wanna eat me if I peed my pants, right? That's probably not the only thing that would have happened, by the way, just so everybody knows. Gonna try to make it smell bad. He doesn't wanna have that kind of a meal. But we don't know what happened in the lion's den, but we do know that first thing in the morning, Darius comes running out and says, did your God save you, Daniel? Daniel chapter 6, 22 says this. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted his God. If you know the rest of the story, the king called on the guys who falsely accused Daniel and they threw him into the pit. So the, don't worry, the lions, the lions got fed, right? Right, they got fed. The angel was tired after protecting Daniel all night long so he didn't show up for, didn't show up for those guys. Here's, here's what we need, we need to look at. And then, the interesting thing is, as it closes it all out, the, the king gives a decree that says, everyone in the kingdom should fear and honor the God of Daniel. So now, you see the heart of the king is changed by what's happened here, by the faithfulness of God, and by his willing servant who stood strong in the, in literally in the face of death. And so we, we see how our standing can have an effect on the people around us to bring them closer to God or to drive them further from God. Here's the thing. If you're facing opposition in your faithfulness to God, realize that when God raises you up, that opposition is going to come. And so don't try to solve it on your own. Don't panic, but have prayer be the opportunity, be the place that you go because if God brought you there, he will bring you through. That's what God has promised to do. When we kneel to pray, when we get that humble heart attitude and before God and pray and bring it before him, he promises that he is going to be faithful and help us to stand. We have to pre-decide that we are gonna do what's right and trust God with the results. Even if those results don't look like we want them to, that we're gonna trust God because all truth is God's truth and God has called us to righteousness. We have to understand that we talked about last week, we do not battle against flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual war that we are fighting. And so God calls us to put on his full armor and to fight with him for his glory. Listen, maybe you're with us this morning and you would say, that kind of relationship with God seems uh, unattainable to me. Like, I don't have a relationship with God that mirrors this. Well, I wanna, I wanna clearly communicate with you this morning that it is not impossible for you to have a relationship with God that is like that. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. We simply have to believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and that he came to die on a cross for us and confess with our mouths and ask him to take away our sin and that's it. Forever and always it is done. The Bible says we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Listen, if you're here with us this morning, no matter what your background is, no matter how many times you've been to church or not or whatever, and you have a desire to know God in that way, I'm gonna offer you an opportunity to pray along with me. Now, it's not a magical prayer, but we talked about that surrendered heart, right? That's what matters this morning is a heart 
that is surrendered to Jesus, humbly asking for him to save us. If you wanna do that this morning, pray something like this with me, wherever you're seated, wherever you are right now. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the dead to forgive my sin. And I need you. God, I ask that you would take away my sin, that you'd be the Lord of my life, that from this moment on, I would walk closely with you just as we saw Daniel walk closely with you, that I would stand for the things that you would want me to stand for. Jesus, thank you for saving me. It's in your name we pray, amen. Listen, if you made a decision this morning to follow Christ, there's a more tab. If you're on Facebook, also there's a tab to get more information. If you're on YouTube, please click that and click on our connection card. That is exactly what it sounds like. It gives you an opportunity to let us know any decision that you've made. If you have prayer requests or anything like that, that's also another great place to go to be able to communicate that with us. Church, if you are a Christ follower and you've been watching along with us, I want to encourage you to be bold like Daniel. I want to encourage you to begin to make the disciplines a part of your life that Daniel made a part of his so that when hard time comes, you don't start to pray, that you continue to pray and that God will show himself faithful in the midst, in the middle of that darkness. Pray with me, church. If you're a Christ follower, I'm gonna pray for that boldness for all of us. Jesus, for those of us who are Christ followers, God, we know every one of us has more steps to take to be closer to you. So God, I ask right now that you would show us that step, that you would give us the boldness to be able to step into the middle of an unknown future because we know it's what you desire for us to do. God, to do what's right and to trust you with the outcome. God, be with us, guide us, direct us, help us to be sensitive to your calling and your word. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. of sin is broken there's a reason why the darkness runs from light there's a reason why we stand here now forgiven Jesus is alive there's a reason why we are not overtaken there's a reason and why we sing on through the night there's a reason why our hope remains eternal jesus is alive let's praise the king together praise the king he is risen praise the king the king who oh, death defeated hallelujah he's alive oh, oh. oh hallelujah he's alive there's a reason why our hearts can be courageous there's a reason why the dead are made alive there's a reason and why we share his resurrection Jesus is alive yeah he is alive praise the king he is risen praise the king he is alive oh praise the king death's defeat
sing together. The grave could not ignore it, church. The grave could not ignore it. When all of heaven's roaring, and hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The world could not ignore it. And all the saints are roaring, and hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The grave could not ignore it. And all of heaven's roaring, and hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The world could not ignore it. And all the saints are roaring, and hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Yeah. Praise the King, oh, He is risen. Praise the King, He's alive. Praise the King, death. Thank you for being with us today at Connect ARAB. A couple things I want to call your attention to. If you are a regular attender or a partner with us, remember we have that giving link. We'd love it for you to click on that. That brings you right to our website and gives you an opportunity to be able to uh, give to God and be faithful with your tithes and your offerings. Um, also, if you're a visitor with us on that more tab, you'll find our connection card. I mentioned that earlier. Please fill that out. Even if there was no decision made, let us know that you were here and how we can pray for you and be a blessing to you. Um, really quick before we go, I want to call everyone's attention back to the Facebook page. If you're watching on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Connect Church, Arab Alabama. You should find us there. And we have a lot of things going on through the week that are intended to encourage you in your walk with Christ. So kind of watch that page. We'll get as much of that as we can onto YouTube after the fact, but we really want to be able to have a live interaction with you folks as much as we possibly can. So we love you. Thank you for being faithful and for being with us this morning. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.